I had just gone back home to my dad's basement from living in Iowa City, where I'd gone to college. I'd gone back because I liked Iowa so much, but I hadn't been able to get a job there, and the romantic thing wasn't happening because every girl I met came out of the closet to me. So I was, I was broke in my dad's basement and, and kind of feeling like, all right, this is kind of the end of my adventures, the end of my stories. And my roommate from high school, because I went to a high school with roommates, which is another story, Gaston called me up and he said, yes, half French, half Cuban, guy from Indiana. He called me up and said he was about to start law school, but he wanted one last hurrah. He was going to take a road trip to go to D.C., Virginia Beach, and New York City. And I'd never really been to any of those places, and I was a suburban kid, so the great outdoors for me was going out and hitting the the East Coast and seeing the city. So I was like, yeah, okay, I'm broke, my stories are done, I'll go. And I think Gaston was on the same trip, because he was the guy in high school that you told stories about. And not because, like, oh, you're making fun of her. Any exciting thing that happened at the school, he was behind. He was the one leading groups of people down the shower pipe to go run into the steam tunnels under the school. He went rappelling out the fourth floor window one night just because he could. He managed to break into the building where we had classes and unroll a giant banner across the roof. Any story from the school was basically a story about Gaston. And then he went to college, and this seemed to be his moment to have his last hurrah as well. Because he was about to go to law school, become an adult, and kind of become his dad. And he's like, no. If we can just go out and have this one final epic journey, that will set the tone for the rest of our lives. I'm like, okay, I'm down with this. I will help you have your epic journey, Gaston. So we go, we go sightseeing in D.C., then we go down to Virginia Beach. And he wanted to go to Virginia Beach because he had heard this is the biggest vacation destination in the United States. And I think he was imagining a giant spring break scene, except this was August, and it was just full of families. So he was hoping to like go to the clubs and meet some girls, and we went to the club, we went dancing, and it's all 14-year-old girls and one old man dancing. I'm like, okay, now, the next day we're at the beach, and I'm just relaxing on the beach, enjoying myself, and he's walking up and down trying to meet a girl, and he's just, he's basically following kids. It's like, no, dude, no. It's like, he's, he's, he was never a punk, he was never into the straight-edge scene, so he didn't know to look for the big X's on the hands. So I was feeling a little bummed out for him, because I know he wants to have the big adventure. It's not happening. So we go up to New York, where we're crashing with a few of his friends. And the first thing that happens when we get in there is I meet his friend's roommate, including this woman who has a voice like she's been smoking two packs a day for 20 years, but she's never smoked a single one. She just has that you know, deep, smoky, gravelly voice. And it's the first time I've heard a voice that just made me weak in the knees. I was like, oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> You're the sexiest person I've ever met. <laughs> I didn't say that, but I was, I was blown away by this person. So we go out drinking that night, and Gaston's hanging out with his friends, I'm just hanging around, and the, I'm just going to call her The Voice. The Voice has a friend out with us as well, who's over from Eastern Europe, and she has this interesting accent, and she's cool, she's chill. And this guy's flirting with her, but he's totally striking out. And I'm like, okay, I'll, I'll try to help him out. Because he's, he's a sweet guy. He's not trying to be mean, but he's just losing. And so I start backing him up, trying to help him out. And she turns her attention to me and starts flirting with me. And I'm like, oh no, it's gone backwards. I'm supposed to be helping this guy out. I'm, I'm a cock-blocking robot from all space now. This is, this is no good. And so the night's just chill. We... It ends up coming to an end, and they're all piling into a cab lead, but Gaston's not done, because he hasn't had his epic moment. And he's in New York City now. He's like, I want, no, let's go to another bar. Come on. Anybody want to go to another bar, another bar? And the voice and her friend are both staying in the cab, waving for me to come in. And I'm being like, ah. I'm like, okay, Gaston, let's go to the bar they told you about. I'll help you out. And so we go out, we go walking all over New York to find this place. We see a, a guy with no pants yelling at somebody else with no pants in the backseat of a car. And I think, like, oh, New York. And I'm really happy because I got to see that. But we get to the bar, and it's this little hole-in-the-wall place. It looks nice enough, like wood paneling, you know, low lighting. And there's just a few people hanging out. You know, Off the side, there's uh, two guys sitting together on a bench. And about the moment where I realize, like, oh, it's, it's a couple sitting on the bench. That's when I feel like I stole his arm, hit my shoulder, spin me around, and leave. I'm like, oh, right. 
you're from Indiana. This is really creepy to you because there are gay people here. I'm like, fine, whatever. So we go back to the, the apartment where we're crashing and he's getting ready, to, we're all getting ready to turn in. He's gone down to the basement to smoke up with his friend and I'm just getting my stuff out of my bag to go to sleep. And all of a sudden I just feel someone smack my ass. And I turn around and the voice is just grinning at me and ducks back into her room where she's crashing with her friend. And I'm like, oh my God, this is, this is what's happening to me right now? This is very nice. This is a nice little epic moment. <laughs> the next day we went home and I started writing my novel and having the rest of my life. <laughs> Donald, I have some questions first. 